Hello everybody, I want to come at you with this little video, you know, this, uh, little video here. Oh my goodness, I can't even talk. Little video here. Um, and I just want to show you something that, uh, it's not really something recent that I discovered, but just like a little bring back of thought, bring back a memory. I just got done watching a documentary, I'm in the middle of watching a documentary called, uh, New New World Order Bible versions. Now we all know what the term New World New World Order is, and um, <clears throat> at least most of us should know what it is. And um, and you see a lot of people in the alternative media talk about it and these types of things, but they 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 kind of talk about it in a fleshly sense, okay? In which I'm I'm gonna kind of give a a parable of some sorts of 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 truth regarding government. And then I want you to realize that in Ephesians 6.12 it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So our fight is not carnal. It's a spiritual fight. It's a spiritual battle. Okay. And, um, and in Hebrews 4.12 it says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword or weapon. Okay. Let's just kind of use in today's version a gun. You know, the reason why I say that, I'm going to explain myself here in a minute. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the, th of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So, throughout history, you've had, you know, governments, you know, pose legislations and laws that disarmed its citizens. And. The reason why they disarmed their citizens is because when there came time for an event to happen, those citizens would not be able to, to defend themselves, and therefore they could commit their genocide and do whatever they have to do, the governments, mind you. And obviously we have this thing with gun confiscation going on today, and these types of things. Now, if we look at this from a spiritual standpoint, and what Satan wants to do, doesn't he want us disarmed? Doesn't he want us disarmed from the true word of God? Which I personally have always believed is the King James Bible. There ain't no other version that is. Okay. Because if he can create something here in the physical that would basically maybe outlaw the King James Bible, maybe outlaw for forbidding you to read it, even on internet circles and these types of things, then you would think that that's in a form that's in a form of disarmament spiritually speaking just like the governments have done in the past in the physical realm satan is trying to do in the spiritual realm again for the word of god is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword it's our only weapon Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart now what if i were to tell you that the phrase new order and new world order is basically referenced in these newer versions and also in these newer versions like the new international version you'll hear pastors or whatever uh, give a sermon on a certain topic like for example the woman at the wall and they'll they'll say something like well in the earlier manuscripts this this event didn't exist or whatever whereas the King James Version doesn't even make note of that or anything but you know the the NIVs and these types of things they would you know they would make note of that why to get you to to doubt the bible to doubt the word of god and in order to get you deceived i mean that's basically the main point of this and so i want to uh, i i want to share a few verses with you and then i'm going to post a link of the documentary that i am currently watching i think it's a pretty good documentary so far um and it really it's 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 a very it, it's a very good documentary. Um, I know a lot of people have been talked about this topic for a few years now, and you know this ain't this ain't a new topic, but it's something I'd like to bring up here and there. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Okay, so for example, here in Second Corinthians five seventeen. And the King James it reads, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Right? Well, in the New International Version, mainly, or the New English Bible, sorry, the New English Bible, what does it say here? The old order is gone, 
and a new order has begun. That's really something to pay attention to. Let's go ahead and take a look at a, look at another one here. In Isaiah 28, 16, in the King James Version, we, we read of the cornerstone. Okay. I want you to pay attention to this word capstone. What is a capstone? Well, in a pyramid, obviously, you know, the, 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 the final stone that is laid at top is considered the capstone. Right? Well, in the back of the dollar bill, you have the, you know, the capstone, you know, the capstone above the pyramid with the eye of Lucifer or the eye of Horus, whatever, and these types of things. So I want you to pay very close attention here. In the King James Version, Isaiah 28, 16 reads, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Now, what is a foundation? A foundation is, is on a building and is something that's laid on the bottom. Right? Jesus says, I am the root, the offspring, David, and these types of things. So he he is the foundation, the precious cornerstone. This is talking about Jesus Christ, right? Okay. So when we go here, in first Peter two seven, this is a new international version, nineteen eighty four. 1 Peter 2 7 reads in the King James, Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, the cornerstone. Okay. The New International Version 1984 reads, The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. Now, why would they put something in there that's in a reference to a pyramid shape and especially when you have all this new age new world order talk of a new world order and Lucifer and the eye of Horus and the capstone of the pyramid why would they throw that in there okay so so that's something I you know that I want to bring to light here which is very it's very interesting Um, now, if we go, here, here's the documentary here, New World Order Bible Versions. If we go to Hebrews 9.10, we read in the King James, okay, the King James Bible, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of Reformation. Obviously, that was, that's dealing with the first coming of Christ, Right? Okay. Now, if we go to the New International Version, Hebrews 9.10 reads, They are only a matter of food and drink and various ceremonial washings, external regulations implying until the time of the new order. Really? Now, if you go to the previous, you know, the next verse in Hebrews 9.11, the New International Version reads but when Christ came as high priest of the good things that are now already here already here he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not made with human hands that is to say is not a part of this creation so really when you look at Hebrews 9 10 in the New International Version and read the following verse it's kind of relying of something that hasn't happened yet new order the New English translation of the Bible says the same thing, basically. They served only for matters of food and drink and various washings. They are external regulations imposed until the new order came. This one's another interesting one here, God's Word translation. These gifts and sacrifices were meant to be food, drink, and items used in various purification ceremonies. These ceremonies were required for the body until God would establish a new way of doing things. I mean, this basically totally takes away the deity of Christ. Or what it does is, it, you know, like these new versions that are mentioning the new order or, an, you know, new world order or whatever, is they put it in a context to where the readers will read it that follow these new versions and kind of think that it is something that has not happened yet especially when you read the following verse in verse 11 in, in the NIV okay so 
Here's another one I want to pay attention here. Micah 5.2. Now, this is another thing where these newer versions basically attack, you know, the, uh, the, the, the coming, you know, the Savior's birth into this world. Okay. The King James Bible in Micah 5.2 reads, But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is, to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from of old, from everlasting. So, from everlasting. That's a key word there. From everlasting. That means eternity. He always was. Okay? Now, if you look in the New International Version, the NIV, it'll read, But you, Beth Bethlehem Ephrata, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. <clears throat> what is origins? Origins means that something that begins, something that starts, something that is born, okay, an origin, all right? Like man, man was created, okay? So man had an origin, man had a beginning, okay? Jesus Christ always was. Okay, <clears throat> you know, in the beginning was, you know, in the beginning, in the beginning the Word was with God, the Word was God. Okay, so Jesus Christ, you know, is the Most High. Jesus Christ is from everlasting. Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. So, so you know, and God was never created. But, but when you add the words origins here, that implies that Jesus Christ was created. Or when, when Jesus Christ was, always was. Jesus Christ said, before Abraham was, I am. You know, and these types of things. So, again, I just wanted to bring these points to light here. To kind of show you, you know, some similarities. And the fact that, you know, these newer Bible versions, and, and you know, the more people get these newer Bible versions soaked into them, you know, especially the churches today, you can see why you see these churches and the World Council of Churches kind of stemming stemming or branching into a global religious system, a system that is preaching another Christ, which will eventually, which is Antichrist. You know, and and you can see this attack on the Word of God. You can see that this is a spiritual battle here to try to disarm its disarm God's people from the true word of God which is from the Texas Receptus King James 1611 and, and everything from that manuscript and what they're doing with these newer versions is totally changing everything around attacking the deity of Christ attacking the virgin birth and all of these things and when, when that is done what does that do? That creates doubt that creates doubt in the Bible and these types of things and that is what Satan is trying to do because again we because he realizes he realizes that this is a spiritual battle here for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places yeah sure we have Isis and these types of things and you know uh, people getting beheaded and you know very very gruesome things indeed and I and I understand that okay but again Fear not those who are able to kill the body, but fear him who is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. And how is and how can Satan do that? To get you to deny the word of God. And how can he do that? Well, to get you to follow suit in a false perversion of the word of God, which is the new which is these newer versions that are out there. That's why I I, I always strongly emphasize stick with the King James a lot of people think it's harder to understand any of these other versions actually the newer versions are actually more harder to understand than the King James the King James actually is basically read for is, is basically written so that eighth you know so the level it can be read at is at, is at an eighth grade reading level okay the King James version is very easy to understand once you actually read it and read it carefully you'll understand that it's very easy to read you know, but again, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. 
this is a spiritual battle and the battle is against the Word of God which is our only weapon and if he can get us disarmed from that then Satan knows that he has us so I figured I'd go ahead and share this with you truth be told truth be known stay safe God bless we will see you next time bye bye they could commit their genocide and do whatever they have to do the governments mind you then obviously we have this thing with gun confiscation going on today and these types of things now if we look at this from a spiritual standpoint and what Satan wants to do doesn't he want us disarmed doesn't he want us disarmed from the true Word of God which I personally have always believed is the King James Bible there ain't no other version that is okay because if it's and um, <clears throat> at least most of us should know what it is and um, and you see a lot of people in the alternative media talk about it and these types of things but they they, they kind of talk about it in a fleshly sense okay in which I'm, I'm gonna kinda give a a parable of some sorts of, of, of truth regarding government and then I want you to realize that in Ephesians 6:12 it says, "For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the, th of the thoughts and intents of the heart." So, throughout history, you've had, you know, governments, you know, pose legislations and laws that disarmed its citizens, and the reason why they disarmed their citizens is because when there came time for an event to happen those citizens would not be able to, to defend themselves and therefore against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places so our fight is not carnal it's a spiritual fight it's a spiritual battle okay and um and in Hebrews 4.12 it says for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword or weapon okay Let's just kind of use in today's version a gun. You know, the reason why I say that, I'm going to explain myself here in a minute. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Hello, everybody. I want to come at you with this little video. You know, this uh, little video. Oh my goodness, I can't even talk. Little video here. Um, and I just want to show you something that uh, it's not really something recent that I discovered, but just like a little bring back of thought, bring back of memory. I just got done watching a documentary. I'm in the middle of watching a documentary called uh, New, New World Order Bible Versions. Now we all know what the term New World, New World Order is.